Anchors up, sells at full. Wait for it. Wait. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? Doing all right. Um, I have all my. I think I, like I'm done with Christmas. I'm done with Christmas. Christmas is done coming. With Christmas. What? No, I mean what? like I'm, like the presents are, um, either in, in the case of the little of uh, of the little ones, they're they're purchased. In the case of the adults that I'm going to be seeing on Christmas, the those gifts are made. Um, and the gifts are wrapped and they're in gift bags and, uh, I'm done with Christmas. All right. This is very early in the season for me to be done with Christmas. I make a lot of gifts. It is very early for me to be, to be done with Christmas. So I'm very proud of myself. Um, because Christmas sneaks up on you really quickly, just like national signing day sneaks up on you really quickly. Um, and that's an expert transition. I'm a professional. I'm a professional. Of course, I ruin it by pointing it out. But screw it. I'm a professional. All right, Kyle. Uh, what we're doing here today, this is going to be um, our, our closing calls episode. This is our episode right before National Signing Day, the first National Signing Day. And Kyle, it's a tradition that, that you and I point out that the addition of the early signing day was a mistake. Uh, they should get rid of early signing day and go back to the February signing day, um, which is already still there. And we agree and we talk about this every year. I don't know if we need to go uh, totally over it every year but that's 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 how i feel i mean yeah especially with how big the uh the transfer portal has come here like you got so much yeah. happening all at once the transfer portal early signing day coaching carousel bowl all games going on at the same time like bowl games it's just so much going on in the month of december here it's just let's just get rid of early signing day move that back to February so we can have a second Christmas. Right. Right. But, but also, I mean, like just for our enjoyment, for like from a, from a podcaster perspective, Holy hell. Yes. Please put it back. Um, but also like, let this be portal season. Let February be national signing day, the way it used to be. And already kind of still is. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. It's it's dumb and I hate it. Uh, but that's 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 uh, outside the outside the scope of today. Today we're going to focus on the fact that it is National Signing Day on Wednesday. We have a list of what is a seven eight players uh, who we're doing closing calls on. Unless any of these players happen to say screw it, I'm waiting till February, which is a possibility. Um. But I think we're going to pretend like that's not going to happen, and we're going to do closing calls on all of these players. It's well, nine. Let's, let's, nine players. We're doing closing calls nine on players? nine players. All right. Well, let's let's start with the current commits, Jared. We got three yeah. three player. We got three players to keep an eye out here for. Uh, I think the big one here is Edric Houston here, the the talented defensive end. Uh, recently, this weekend, made a uh, visit out to Clemson in Alabama. Yep, uh, a lot of a lot of tension in Buckeye Nation right now as he visits those two universities here. But is are we in flip watch here for Edric Houston? Are we in flip watch? Yes, yes, yes. We are. We are absolutely in flip watch. Uh, I would I would venture to say we're in flip warning. I'd, I'd venture, I guess, to say we are in flip warning territory. That being said, my closing call uh, still going to be Ohio State on Edric Houston. Um, am I 100% confident in that? I am not. But as of right now, I, I, I as of the time of recording this, I'm like 60% Ohio State, 40% the field. It's about where I'm sitting at the moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm with you here, Jared. I I think that Hendrick Houston 
at this point that we're recording. Uh, I think he's still gonna still gonna go to Ohio State here, even even after his uh, latest uh, visits to Clemson and and Alabama. I just until we hear more about his his visit here and how how it went and just getting some feedback, I still think it's a I still think it's Ohio State here. But again, I I still think we're maybe a little early here to find out a little bit more about his uh his visits. But as of we're what we're record when we're recording here, Jared, I, I'm still picking Ohio State. It is Sunday night at eight forty two Eastern time. You 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 just said you, you you said it a few times, so I thought I'd just I'd throw that out there. <laughs> yeah. Um. Next up, running back Jordan Lyle. Uh, Ohio State has three running backs currently in this recruiting class. Uh, Jordan Lyle, however, there are heavy rumors, heavy crystal ball, uh, entries that uh, have him flipping to Miami. Kyle. Um. We're definitely flip watch. We're definitely flip warning. How are you feeling on this one? Oh boy. Look, there's so many, so, so many Ohio state fans out there, Jared. And, and I, and I think, I do think there's some, I think there is definitely some, some things to worry about when it comes to NIL and how much, how much, Hase is willing to uh, fork over money for NIL to to keep or get players to come into Ohio State here. Yeah, but my, Miami is making just a big big push on a lot of big names here to try to get players to come to Miami here, and I I think this is another case here, Jared. I think I think we may probably are going to see a flip here of Jordan going to going to Miami. Yeah, I think I think Jordan Lyles gone. I think he will be going to Miami. I'd like to be pleasantly surprised. Uh, that being said, Ohio State does have three running backs in this recruiting class. Now you also have to keep in mind that they got zero in last year's recruiting class. Um, yep. But you know, James Peoples and Sam William Dixon will still be in this recruiting class. Uh, I I feel I feel okay about this. I don't feel. I mean, I. I, I want to have Jordan Lyle in this recruiting class. Ohio State wants to have Jordan Lyle in this recruiting class. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to sour grape this. I'm really not. Um, but you know, I, and I think it's also probably pretty telling. Ohio State's not been searching out. When are we going to grow balls and use NIL like everyone else? We are using NIL like everyone yeah. else. Um, let, let me let me put it to you this way. Look at the teams who are just going ham, who are just putting stupid money out there trying to get recruits in. And tell me what they all have in common. They're big name programs who are struggling. It's Texas A&M. It's Miami. It's a couple other schools. They're not garbage. No, no, no. See, is, no, that, that's where I want to, that's what I want to push back. They're not garbage programs, Zach. They're not garbage programs. They're they're underachieving programs. These are programs that could, maybe should be great, but aren't. Because what I think we're seeing right now is programs like Ohio State and Alabama and Georgia and like just, you know, name name your top six, eight universities. I think what these universities are doing is taking that NIL money and putting them into trying to convince players to stay in college another year, as opposed to chasing high schoolers with money. And I think that if you, I'm just saying, like if you, I think that's the better way of going about it. Because you, Texas A&M literally had the, according to recruiting stars and metrics and points, had the greatest recruiting class of all time a couple years ago, and basically none of those players are left. Yeah, so I, buying a recruiting class might feel great three days before National Signing Day, but it hasn't proven to work so far. Yeah, it, is that is that where we're going to see Miami uh, two years from now? Maybe. Maybe. Firing their head coach and having their entire recruiting class 
drift out into the portal? Probably. Yeah. Time will tell. Time will tell. Right, but third, for third right player, now, Jordan Lyle going to Miami. Yeah. Third third player here, Jeremiah Smith. Yeah. I, I feel like so many people keep, keep for saying, so long. Oh, Jeremiah's going to flip. Jeremiah's going to flip. Blah, 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 blah. And he keeps saying. He's wearing Florida oh, State gloves. No. He's. He's he's a he's a Buckeye through and through. I I truly believe that he's gonna he's gonna stick with Ohio State. And, and for the those Florida State gloves, hey, just just look at the back of the helmet. What was in the back of that helmet there, Jared? An Ohio State it was sticker. A it was yeah, exactly. So well, just, it, it it should be pointed out. Um, yeah, but yeah, Smith's a Buckeye. It should be pointed out that that is a thing that they do at that high school. If you're committed to a school. They like the the high school puts the sticker on the helmet. So like, as long as you're formally committed, then you're gonna have that sticker on the helmet. He's a kid having fun. Like he just might like the gloves. I don't have to tell you, but he's coming to Ohio State. All right, Cal. Those are the three guys currently in the recruiting class. We have two of them staying. We have one of them leaving. I feel I feel like we feel very good about Jeremiah Smith, leave, uh, staying. Very good about Jordan Lyle leaving. And then we're all, we're kind of not 50 50, but we're, it's a little bit of a questionable stay for Edric Houston at this point. I think we're, I think we're lockstep there, Kyle. Now let's, let's take a look at some players not currently committed to Ohio State. Let's do some closing calls on them. Uh, and let's see if we're, uh, lockstep all the way through this one as well. Right, First up, right. yep. uh, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. Oh, okay. For, yeah. Let's talk about the uh, defensive tackle, uh, Carlin Jones, uh, undecided currently at the moment here. Decommitted uh, from Nebraska a few weeks ago. Yeah. He recently had a visit to USC this mm -hmm. last weekend. I believe he committed to Ohio State the week before that. If I... He... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he... I don't know. I, I I think I think we're going to start seeing, I think we're going to start seeing some things uh, moving towards USC here. I know prior to this weekend, I think there was a lot of talk. There's a lot of positive of Jones going to Ohio State here. Uh, this would have been a nice, a nice addition uh, for Ohio State to get. But I man, I, I I think I think this visit to USC. From everything I'm hearing, I think the um, visit went really well, and I think USC is gonna gonna get this guy in the end. I, I like Ohio State here. I know a lot of people get nervous about like last visit. You know, you want to get that last visit. You know, it's always good to get the last visit. Um, and I know a lot of people subscribe to that. I'm not a. I think it's a factor, but I don't think it's a huge factor. Uh, I'm sticking with Ohio State for now. Um, my 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 closing call going to be on for Carlin Jones going to be Ohio State. So Kyle and I not not lockstep there, not lockstep there. Yeah. Who who we got next, Jared? Safety Coy Parish. Uh, he's currently committed to Minnesota. Uh, he is, however, uh, flirting very hard with Ohio State. He's sort of a late riser in the recruiting ranks. Ohio State Ooh. had an opportunity with some uh, a few different safeties. Uh, in the in the during the course of this year, um, you know, we we talked about a lot of them during the you know during our uh, during our building blocks episodes through the summer uh, and then into the early fall, um, and they they missed on a lot of those safeties. Uh, they obviously in this class uh, already have Jalen McLean. Uh, they're really trying to get like a second like star safety uh, missed on a bunch of guys. Um, but then Coy Parrish makes like a, a pretty late push up the recruiting rankings. Um, so Ohio state gives them a call. There's some talk. There's some, some communication. As I said, he's currently committed to Minnesota and I like Ohio state's chances here. Uh, give me, give me Ohio state for, for Coy Parrish. There's a flip I... coming. Yeah, I agree. I, I think I think Ohio State in the end is going to get going to get this guy to to flip over. I think he uh, 
everything that I'm hearing here. Uh, he great visit with Ohio State just a couple um, last weekend, a couple weekends ago. I had a great visit here, and I think I think Ohio State has a really good shot at at um coming having him come over to Ohio State. And this is a guy who is for the composite is the tenth best safety in the in the country. Uh, I've seen I've seen some rankings have him as high as like two or three. Uh, so, you know, just depends upon who you ask, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, Kyle, who do we have next? All right, let's talk about Ernest Willor, the uh, defensive end here. And I'm trying to pull him up. I forget exactly where he's where he's at here uh i am he's uncommitted uh, he's, yeah. he's he's out he's out of uh towson maryland oh. and that sounds that sounds very very familiar there, there's there's an ohio state kid um that, w- that was at towson maryland as well i, for, I forget you you who, you keep but... talking I'll, I'll i'll look it look it up jerry right. look it up uh certainly there's there's a lot of um he, he's been i think i think a lot of people have Pointed him to Wisconsin. I think recently he went to. Um, he had his did a lot of visits this um, this December here. Went to Wisconsin, Ohio State, and then just had his recent visit at Maryland here. But I think this one I'm going to go with Wisconsin. I, th- I think he'll ultimately end up a, as a Badger. A very quick search. I I'm not finding. Uh, that's not right. finding anyone. Uh, um maryland's a player here as kyle points out wisconsin's a player here ohio state's a player here i'm going with ohio state i I think i've been taught we've been talking about ernest uh willer in this class for months like another guy whose name if you've been following all of our building blocks episodes through the summer who's been either in or near our mock classes all year, um, there's a long-established relationship here. I think Ohio State wins it out in the end. Um, w- with all of these defensive ends, um, yeah. I mean, if he if he ever needs a transfer out of Ohio State, he can either go to Kentucky or Cincinnati because that's how the portal seems to be going at the moment. Um, you know, Cincinnati and Kentucky just, you know, getting our table scraps. Um, the... But yeah, th- with any of the defensive ends, there is a lot of concern right now about the defensive line coaching situation. Um, you, just like Christmas, just like National Signing Day, it is also Larry Johnson Sr. is going to retire season. This is a, a thing we have been discussing for at least five years. Um, but every year it doesn't happen, it becomes more likely to happen. He's not getting younger. Um, You know, I I think it's a thing we've talked about in years past where three years ago, he told his defensive ends, JT and, and, and Jack Sawyer, that he guaranteed them three years. Now, guaranteeing someone three years doesn't mean I'm going to retire in three years. That's not what that means. But we are at the end of those three years Um, as both Sawyer and JT are making their stay or go NFL decisions. So, you know, a lot of that's driving, you know, Edric Houston possibly flipping. Will Willer come to Ohio State? There's a lot of that that's that's causing issues. And then on top of that, it's been pretty well documented at this point that Larry Johnson doesn't exactly his style of defensive line coaching and schematics don't fit inside the new Ohio state defensive system. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's, there's some personality clashing. There's some ego clashing um, all, all of this sort of adding to the rumor mill. And quite frankly, I've been Mr. Uh, he'll retire when he wants to retire and he'll retire. Yada, yada, yada. 
it, it actually might happen this year. It, I, I feel like any feel like most of the again the tradition is old as time. Uh, you know, Larry Johnson might retire season. I think there's actual. I think there's actually some smoke at the bottom of this fire this year. Um, mm-hmm. so it does make it difficult to bring in defensive linemen if they don't know who their position coach is going to be. But I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with Ohio State getting Ernest Willer for now. Um, but I feel like any of the defensive line guys who are wavering, it's a, it's a bit up in the air. Yeah. Day is going to have the talk with LJ. I don't, I don't know about that. All right. Uh, next kid here, Jared. Chance Robinson, uh, wide receiver out of the state of Florida. Yeah. Uh, actually, he's actually he's out of um, um, St. Thomas Aquinas, actually. Well-established yeah. tradition of Ohio State, St. Thomas Aquinas players. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, he's been a mitt for Miami for quite a while now, since since April here. When did uh, Miami that, come like our chief recruiting rival? <laughs> well, you, you know why. Uh, he he, re- he had a visit in, at Ohio State about a month ago. Um, but I I don't think it's I don't think it's enough here. I think I think Miami keeps keeps Robinson at home. Ohio State Oregon really State. wanted, I don't want to say about, I don't know about really, but Ohio State was looking to get four wide receivers in this class. Um, if that fourth guy was, you know, it's like three or four, right? I think, and but like, you know, you go four for Chance Robinson. Like if they can get Chance Robinson, they'll go four. Um, but, you know, this guy as talented as Chance Robinson, you're, you're looking at being the fourth guy. You know, Mylon Graham's great. Jeremiah Smith, we've already talked about, is great. Jeremiah McClellan's great. Um, so, you know, you're Chance Robinson, and you're either the the third or the fourth wide receiver in Ohio State's wide receiver class in a room that's already filled with guys. And not only that, Miami's just dropping bags of cash, or at least they're promising bags of cash. We've learned in years past that promising and delivering those bags of cash have Sometimes been a bit of a gap there, um, but yeah, I'm I'm with Kyle on this one. I I don't think this flip is going to happen. Um, a month or two ago, I would have been very bullish that Chance Robinson coming to Ohio State was going to happen. Uh, we released a mock just last week where I included him in the mock, but I did so with a pretty low level of confidence. Um, but. As you know, if if the choice here is yes or no, I'm gonna go with no. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, uh, linebacker. We've we've talked about quite a while here. Um, currently committed to Notre Dame, uh, Kingston Villamu. He mm-hmm. currently committed to uh, Notre Dame here. Uh, I think it was sometime in the summertime. Thought Ohio State had a really good shot at uh, at getting him here, uh, but I, I just haven't really seen any movement here or heard any kind of movement recently here. So I I just don't see don't see a flip here unless Laurenitis or Knowles somehow just gets on a plane and makes Can't. a move here. I just... Well, Kyle, about that. <laughs> um. James Laurinaitis is not yet an official member of the Ohio State coaching staff. Um, we'll see what that looks like in January. Uh, mm-hmm. But but for right now, he's not. So he he's uh, he's chained down to Columbus as far as recruiting so, is going. Yeah, I, I I think Kingston stays stays at Notre Dame. Yeah. Um, this is a situation where maybe if James Laurinaitis, if a coaching change was made soon enough, that maybe he could have gotten, maybe it could have made a difference. And But that's just, we'll never know. We'll never know, and I agree with Kyle. Um, really, again, would have loved to have had him in this class. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. Um, it looks like Ohio State might look to... 
uh, fill this spot, uh, much like, well, we'll talk about him in a second, but maybe try and fill this spot, not through the recruiting class, because they, they did really want to get uh, a third linebacker here. Um, they might look to fill that spot via the transfer portal instead. Mm. Finally, Kyle, we have Jordan Seaton. Now, Jordan Seaton literally just committed to Colorado. Um, yep. However, if you go back and listen to the episode we did right before that commitment, I said to I said to everyone, I said, "Don't necessarily think that this commitment is the final commitment. It's a money-driven commitment. Don't be convinced that the that commitment would be the final commitment." I would not be shocked if we saw a last second flip with Jordan Seaton. He is currently committed to Colorado. It is a very recent commitment, but don't be shocked if someone shows up with a bag of cash and a promise and Jordan Seaton flips and goes somewhere else. As of well, right now, I, I don't think that place is Ohio state. Yeah. Now trying to flip for, 2024 no <laughs> well no no one's ever committed anymore that's just that's not how things work now but for right now uh jordan seaton i, I i'm not gonna say it's 100 percent colorado i fully stand on stand by my prediction that this could go down to the wire I wouldn't be shocked, by the way, of all the guys that we've talked about so far, I wouldn't be shocked if he just doesn't sign on National Signing Day and maybe takes this through February. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. All right, Kyle, that's it. Those are our, our uh, closing calls on nine Ohio State targets. Uh, let's, let's talk a bit about the transfer portal. Um, sure. Maybe some super quick updates on some departing players. Kyle McCord's headed to Syracuse after things between he and Nebraska fell apart. I, I don't know how to give commentary on this without it sounding like I'm bashing Kyle McCord. Uh, I'll say that Nebraska is a downgrade from Ohio state and that uh, Syracuse is a downgrade from Nebraska. I don't know if the uh, pastures were as green as he was expecting them to be. Mm -hmm. Mine Williams headed to the draft. Uh, Chip Trainum headed to Kentucky. Evan Pryor headed to Cincinnati. Heavy rumors about Julian Fleming going to Penn State, but that's not been finalized, uh, is, is at least not publicly yet. Um, Tommy Eichenberg appears to be going to the draft based off of him participating in the senior bowl. Um, Josh Proctor, the same. He's announced he's participate, participating in the senior bowl. So that would again, suggest that he's headed to the draft, although it hasn't specifically been said. Um, Kai Stokes headed to Cincinnati. That's, that's what we're looking at right now. Yeah. Lots of, lots of move, lots of movement here. Yeah, it's. I'm not going to make any promises, I, Kyle. I don't, I'm not I don't make... even know where to, start, where to start with the transfer portal because it's so. It's a mess. So large. It, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's... It, it, it is. It is a mess. I'm, I'm trying to pull up here. There are, according to ON3, ON3, 1,527 players in the portal. And only 294 are committed elsewhere. So that's less than 20%. Yeah. I know it's still, er, still early. Still Very early. early. Less than 20% have found a home. I, I, yeah. And by the way, a lot of them aren't going to. So I get, I get your point. But also, like, there's some very, very talented players out there who just haven't yet. Um, now, that being said, Kyle, um, I, I want to point out, Ohio State has lost... One running back to the NFL, two running backs to the portal. They are about to lose Jordan Lyle, who they were expecting to come in uh, as a true freshman. 
And I want to point, and by the way, everyone and their brother had uh, Travion Henderson going to the NFL as well. And yet, I find it very interesting that Ohio State is not currently pursuing any running backs in the transfer portal. I'm not saying Travion's coming back. But. But. <laughs> but. Um, Ohio State. Uh, so, yeah, quarterback. Let's talk about the quarterback position. Ohio State, Kyle's just said, so many players out there. So, so many so, players out there. I have five. I have five right now that I feel pretty comfortable saying are legitimate Ohio State targets. Is one of them the Toledo quarterback, Daquan Finn? No. That would be fun, though. Okay. If Urban Meyer was still the coach, Daquan Finn would already have signed. Like, Gotcha. Well, he just, just minutes ago uh, is heading to Texas to join Baylor. Oh, you really threw me because you said he's going to, like, Baylor. He's going I, to the state of Texas. Yes. You really threw me there for a second. <laughs> yes. I was like, Texas, why the hell would he be going to Texas? But yeah. Um, Ohio State and Cam Ward have been in communication. Cam Ward transferring out of uh, Washington State, which is a, a team that used to be a Power 5 team. Uh, but is no longer and probably factors into uh, the decision making of both Cam Ward and DJ Uyunglele, who are both transferring out. Um, as far as I know, there's been no communication with Uyunglele, but there has been communication with uh, Cameron Ward. Do I think Cameron Ward eventually ends up at Ohio State? I don't. I don't. Yeah. Um, as as the days go as the days go on, the less likely I. I believe that Ward will come to Ohio State. Ohio State has an NIL budget. And the question you have to ask yourself is, how much of that NIL budget do you want to spend on Cam Ward compared to how much do you like the guys who you currently have in the locker room? And from my understanding, Ryan Day, Rayola, us coming, and McCord doesn't want to compete? No, no. Uh, well, maybe in Nebraska. That may have been the situation in Nebraska. Oh, is maybe that's what you're talking about. You meant Rayola is coming and McCard doesn't want to compete, and you probably sent that back when we were talking about him in Nebraska. That's a possibility. Yeah. That's a possibility, Zach. Um, but, yeah, the uh, you, Ohio State has to ask themselves, what do they want out of a portal quarterback? Do they want someone who's going to come in and play? Do they want someone who's going to come in and compete? Or do they want another chug? Another gunner? Another, uh, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the Oregon State kid who's who, who was on the roster this year. Um, who do you want? Like, who, who do you want that? Because you're probably going to need to go get a quarterback. Um, I don't know how much of it you want to put on Air Nolan potentially to play in his this freshman year, but hey, maybe, maybe you bring in a maybe you bring in another fifth year senior, another grad chance for a senior who wants to come get a master's at Ohio State, and that's to me where I think this is heading. I, I think if if we play the game, Kyle Kyle super dupy super dupy super duper early. That's what I was trying to say. Super duper early prediction. Who's the quarterback for Ohio State week one? Week one? Is it Brown? Kleinholtz? Keenholtz. I don't know why I always do that. Brown, Keenholtz, uh, Air Nolan, other. I, I, get, I, gotta get, I gotta give it to Brown right now right it just i mean there's there's a lot of good things hearing from the uh december camp here about how well he's he's doing in december in practices but i mean it's he 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 lost the starting job and partially due to injury 
earlier this year, yes, and he was injured as well too. So did, did when you get a healthy, when you have a healthy Devin Brown, it may, maybe he'll maybe he'll be the week one starter here. But a lot, a lot of things that you like from from Air Nolan that that you see here, see and hear. But week one, I, I'm going to give it to Brown at this moment. That's fair. I, I another, think that's another fair. name, another name that just entered the portal here, Jared. Another name that entered the portal, uh, Malachi Nelson. Yeah, Malachi Malachi Nelson, a, um, a very 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 highly recruited uh, player back in uh, the twenty two class here. Is is in the portal too? I don't think this is something Ohio State may not go after, but it's just definitely another name to throw into that hat there of the quarterback. Um, he's a, he's a five star quarterback. Um, mm-hmm. Although that's odd, I would say him entering the portal after one year. Yeah. What? Are there are there are there any rumors you think fluttering around around USC about their quarterback situation? I, I no way true. right not, no there's no true. way right not like I, why why would why would a five star nearly top ten player at quarterback be leaving USC in the fall? When presumably there's going to be a quarterback opening in the spring. Uh something something's not right there. Something something's weird there, but we're gonna leave we're gonna leave that for now. Um So yeah, I think the quarterback situation, Ohio State has to ask themselves what do they want and, and what's in the budget. And I, I just I don't think Cam Ward's gonna be that guy. Yeah, offensive like line. Said, oh, sorry. You go ahead. Finish your thought. Oh no, I was just I'm just repeating myself. Just as I said before, the more the more the more the number of days pass by, the the least likely that I'm gonna see see him uh, transfer to Ohio State. Offensive line, Kyle. Uh, Ohio State. I the weakest part of their team this year was the offensive line. Ohio State, mm-hmm. in theory. Uh, will be returning four of five starters for this offensive line. I've already put it out there on this podcast that I don't... <laughs> four of those five starters will not be returning. Not not to their starting spot. I've said it on the podcast before, I'll say it again. Um, Ohio State needs a starter, if not two. It does not appear at this time that the Carter-Smith relationship that we were talking about the last time we talked about the portal is going to work out. Uh, I, I don't have great clarity as far as the why and the who of that. Who is making that decision? Is it Ohio State? Is it Carter Smith? Um, I, and I don't know the why. But it does look like that is not going to play out. However, uh, Chase Basantis who is uh, a guy, if you were watching our recruiting show a couple years ago, um, was someone that Ohio State had a, a great relationship with, kind of missed on last second. Uh, he is, according to On3, the top-ranked interior offensive lineman in the transfer portal, although that was he started as a true freshman on the interior line, my belief is that his long-term career is at tackle. I believe that if Ohio State brings him in, it'll be to play tackle. So I, I don't, again, the portal tracker is currently calling him an interior offensive lineman. I don't believe he's an interior offensive lineman. I believe he is a tackle. I believe Ohio State is looking at him as a tackle. So it, what I'm hearing is that this is Ohio State's absolute number one target in the transfer portal right now. Yeah, and I mean, thank God. You, you got, but you got to you got to close. Yeah, you got to fix the weakest link in on the team, and 
yeah, this Ohio State's got to close. Like, like Jerry said, they got to close on, on on this guy. Like you, you got you got to you got to fix fix this offensive line here. Yeah, and for what it's worth, I don't and. I don't know who the other guy is. Maybe that other guy is a guy who comes in during the spring. But you can't you can't stop with Besantis. Uh I, I think like had they gotten and Kyle and I both think that they won't, had they gotten Jordan Seaton, then yeah, you get Seaton, you get Besantis, you have Montgomery aging into the, you know, he, Montgomery was never going to start as a freshman. He wasn't big enough. But as a sophomore, there's a lot of hope that Montgomery will be pushing for a starting spot. So, you know, you get Montgomery into the starting lineup. You get Pesantis into the starting lineup. And, you know, you really hope that maybe you got Jordan Seaton into the starting lineup, but that doesn't look plausible anymore. Ohio State needs another starter on the offensive line. To really shore up that offensive line, they're going to need another starter, in my opinion. Um, uh, Yeah, it's... Again, they're only losing one guy. Maybe Montgomery starts off his life at guard. Maybe he doesn't. Uh, But maybe, maybe Montgomery replaces one of the tackles, and one of the tackles move to guard... Or, ideally, Basantis becomes your left tackle. Maybe you move your left tackle to right tackle. Your right tackle moves inside. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. But I, I really think Ohio State needs a second starter level, not not a depth guy, but a starter on the offensive line, at least someone who's going to compete for starting. Basantis, you bring in to start. Basantis comes in, Basantis starts. They at least need to go get a second guy who will compete for a starting spot, even if it's not a guaranteed starter. But yeah. for right now, I think they're like horse blinders on on Chase, and I, I'm okay with that. But I, it will need to be built upon. Yep, yep. Agreed. Linebacker, Jared. Yeah. Um, linebacker. So Cody Simon coming back. He's that's I think one of our, the absolute few dedicated hey guys, I am coming back announcements Ohio State has had so, so far. Um hmm. Eichenberg looks to be leaving. Uh he announced his intent to play at the the um senior bowl. Seems like he's he's gonna leave. Um, we don't have any word on steel chambers at this point. Uh, Reed Carrico has entered the portal. I don't know how expected that was. Um, as far as the Ohio state staff, if they were expecting Carrico to depart, uh, they do have Gabe powers. They do have Hicks who should be aging into a starting role at Ohio state. Um, Again, Ohio State wanted to get three linebackers in this class. Uh, that does not look like it's going to happen with the miss on KVA. So you're going to go get a guy who's going to compete for a starting role at Ohio State. Uh, Kyle, who's that guy right now? Who's the target for that position? Uh, right now, it's the um, hit out of um, out of uh, Cal there, Caleb uh, Alarms Orr. Yep. Uh, he was a four star. Uh, no relation to Tom. Yeah. No, no relation to Tom or. Yeah. We, we want to make sure. Be very make sure clear. That. Be very, very clear about that there. Just to relieve any confusion. You, you good? Um, I was just yeah, joking. I didn't mean, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, we're, we're good there. Yeah, uh, he's already been in for a visit. Uh, I, I think that there is a very good chance, a very good opportunity that uh, Elam's or comes in for Ohio State. Um, the defensive line, interesting, Kyle. Um, 
I was talking a little bit about how there's been a lot of departures on the running back in the running back room, which may or may not be pointing towards Travion coming back. I think he's coming back, but I don't, I, you know, I don't want to say it too loudly. I'm going to say it softly. Interesting situation. Ohio state had, uh, I believe either they, I'm trying to remember if Trey Moore actually came in or not. De uh, he's a defensive tackle from middle Tennessee, or excuse me, not Trey Moore. Marley cook, uh, is the defensive tackle from middle Tennessee. Um, I forget if he actually visited or not, but I believe Ohio State canceled that visit. Uh, but regardless, it looks like Ohio State has moved on from Marley Cook. Ohio State did have a scheduled visit with a uh, very talented defensive end from uh, uh, the University of Texas, San Antonio, uh, named Trey Moore. He's one of the highest recruited guys in the portal right now. And apparently Ohio State canceled that visit. Yep. Now. I've, I've been leaning, I've been leaning towards Kyle. I've been very leaning towards my call returning to Sawyer returning. But I, but I feel like those are known. I feel like those have, those have been known. Those are known knowns. Why, why Trey Moore? One of the best pass rushers on the, in the group of five. In college football, in the group of five, in last year, one of the highest rated guys in the transfer portal. Why does Ohio State call that visit off, Kyle? I need to, it, it's it's mind boggling. I I really do not know. And then Marley Cook, a defensive tackle, looks Ohio State's a bit long in the tooth at the defensive tackle position. You know, you think you're going to lose Ty Leak. Maybe you're going to lose my call. You're not really sure what you're going to do at the defensive tackle position next year. One of the best group of five defensive tackles in the transfer portal. Very highly rated player in Marley Cook. And Ohio State calls off the dogs there, too. Kyle, I'm not a conspiracy theory guy. Although I do enjoy a good conspiracy theory. I enjoy looking at conspiracy theories, but I don't believe in them most of the time. But what's happening? Why why is Ohio State ending their relationships with with portal guys? I mean like Amari Abor left. Yeah, I it, it's mind boggling. I, I Or do we or is there can, something we don't here, know? I wish I could sit here and give you a good understanding of why I mean, why, there has to be a why. Called it off. I, I, there has to be a why. It's not. It's not like Ohio State missed. It's not like Ohio State really wanted him. No, they just they just called the visit off. I'm not saying anything, Kyle. But I am saying that places like Ohio State, and I'm repeating myself on this one, places like Ohio State and the other top programs in college football right now, your top eight or six or ten program, seems to be putting more money into trying to convince guys to return as opposed to convincing high school freshmen to join the team. Mm -hmm. Ohio State seems to be calling off Portal visits for defensive linemen. I feel like they were already counting on Sawyer and Hall returning. Uh, listen, I, I don't think I have to fill in the blanks for people. I'm not going to say it out loud. I feel really good that Trey's coming back, and I don't even want to say that out loud. But what's happening in the defensive line room right now? With with everything that we're we're seeing with the uh, with commits with the with the recruiting side of it, and then the rumors again with LJ and all that, I it's definitely a very concerning point. Right concerning. Now. I don't know if "concern" is the word I'd use. Kyle, I I think. 
I think Ohio State fans, and this is just a theory, I don't know anything. I want to be very clear. I sometimes get in some inside info passed to me. It happens. I'm not a reporter. I don't report on it. I'm just a doofus with a podcast. I'm not equipped to handle breaking news and insider info. I just, I just say, hey, thanks for the info, and I move on with my life. This isn't that. This is just me trying to put some tea leaves together. I think Ohio State fans have some pleasant surprises coming once players start deciding if they're going to go to the NFL or not. You know, they'll need it because December has been, there haven't really been really any good news for Ohio State fans here in the month of December. Uh, I mean, sure. I mean, in the month of December, has there been, I don't know, it's not been really bad news. Like, would I, would, I, would I have liked Kyle McCord to stay? Yes, I would have liked for Kyle McCord to stay. But the whole reason Kyle McCord's not staying is because he wasn't guaranteed a starting spot, which means he wasn't. You can look at however many Ohio State players have entered the portal. Not one of them. Not one of them, I would have guaranteed you, was a starter. Not one. When Ohio State starts losing starters, let's just look at, let's look at Igbenosa. Let's look at Igbenosa for a second. He would have started for Ole Miss last year. And instead he decided to come here and start. When Ohio State starts losing those guys, then I'll worry about the transfer portal. Kyle McCord is as close to that as Ohio State has gotten. And did he upgrade in the portal, Kyle? Did he go to Alabama? Did he go to Georgia? Or did he go to Syracuse? Say it again, Jared. Syracuse. Yes, Syracuse. So did he upgrade in the portal? Jamison Williams is one of like the only guys... Jamison Williams would have started for Ohio State, but he also would have been third banana. He didn't want to be third banana. He wanted to be one one banana. He was good enough to be the first banana, and he wanted to go somewhere and be the first banana. So instead of being the starting but third wide receiver for Ohio State, he went to be the starting and first wide receiver for Alabama. And I know someone out there is being like Joe Burrow. Had Joe... Burrow not injured his wrist and had, again, Joe Burrow didn't even lose the starting spot at Ohio state. Like again, that's about as close as you're going to get. You can maybe throw, throw Joe Burrow into that conversation as well. The difference, but the biggest difference between Joe Burrow and Kyle McCord right now is that Kyle McCord went to LSU, which is a top flight program. And Kyle McCord went to Syracuse. Who is Ohio State lost that you're going, God damn it about? Would I have liked to have kept Evan Pryor or Chip Trainum? Yeah, I would have liked to have kept either one of them. I would have liked to have kept Kyle McCord. I wouldn't have wanted Ryan Day or anyone else guaranteeing Kyle McCord the starting role next year. And if that was the deal, as has been rumored, and again, I don't know that that's true. But if the rumor is true and Kyle McCord and or someone in Kyle McCord's family said, you know, I want to be guaranteed a starting spot next year. And again, I don't know that to be true. But if that's true. Ohio State and Ryan Day made the correct decision of saying, I'm not going to guarantee you that starting spot. If any of that is true. Yep. I don't look at this at this list of departures would have liked to have kept Ryan Turner. Would have liked to have kept Jair Brown. Would have liked to have kept Kai Stokes. Would have liked to have mm-hmm. kept those guys. Austin, literally look at the post above the post uh, above the message you just sent. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Way ahead of you, buddy. Way ahead of you. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, the point is, is that 
you're either losing starters or you're gaining starters. Who posted it in the transfer portal first? I'm assuming you based off of the exclamation points, but I, I can't switch the Discord around while we're recording because it messes up the thing. <laughs> Kyle, I went on a big, long soliloquy there about the defensive line and, and the transfer portal and things. We, we have one more line. position. We have one more position yeah. to talk about. And that's a safety. And I, and I think this is probably the good the good position here uh, with some good news here. Uh Kamari Ramsey, the uh, the safety out of UCLA. I believe we mentioned him in last week's episode here. I think Ohio State is in very, very good shape to have uh, Ramsey come over to Ohio State here. Um, I, I definitely like Ohio State's odds with him. Yeah, and, and I think it's it's inter- Ohio State's in a in a spot right now with safety. Um, Proctor. Uh, much like Eichenberg, seemingly headed to the NFL based off of his entry into the Senior Bowl. Um, and there are rumors spreading that Sonny Styles might not be playing safety for Ohio State next year. He could be moving closer to the line, could have some openings at the safety position. Um, Ohio State looking for someone to come in and start at safety. You know, like like I was talking about the quarterbacks. There's three there's three types of portal players. There are guys who you bring in to start. There are guys who you bring in to compete, and there are guys who you bring in for depth. Those are your three types of portal players. Ramsey's a guy who you bring in to start. He is a guy brought in to start. Mm-hmm. So if you lose if you lose Proctor and you lose ish Styles if he's moving positions if he's moving closer to the line and then on top of that you know we still have you know we we don't know um, where Ransom where he's headed the fact that Ohio State is going after a bona fide absolute starter at safety in the transfer portal makes me think maybe Ransom's leaving. I don't know that. That's just me speculating based off of, you know, pursuing a young, highly touted safety out of the portal. Um, mm-hmm. but I, th- I think uh, I think you got to watch out for USC with Ramsey here. Sure. Uh, definitely a lot of buzz around USC with a lot of transfer um a lot of transfers coming to USC here in Ramsey's name has definitely have popped up uh, in, in a lot of places. So I think, I think USC's USC, I think it's down to USC and Ohio state here, but as, as we're recording tonight here, Jared, I, I like Ohio state solid still. I agree. I think, I think those are all the players here, Jared. We, we went on for an hour talking about, <laughs> about uh, commitment and with um, flips and with transfer portals. So I think, I think that, I think this was good here. Any, any other, any other last names here to throw to our audience? Just last names, no first names. Uh, any names, any names. Any names. No, no, no. Those, those are the names we're going over today. Those are the names we're going over today. Um, yeah, I think I think I think we did what we wanted to do this episode. Um yeah, I think we're good. Um I I don't know if we're still on the good half of the Christmas deadline as far as the T Public store goes. Um they'll tell you though, if you go to the T Public store, they'll tell you if Ohio if uh if you can get those t shirts by Christmas. You might need to direct ship them. Direct shipping might be a good idea. Um but, you know, go on the website and take a look. Maybe maybe they will, maybe they won't. Uh, you can check out those T-shirt stores at 7071. That's all numerical. Uh, 7071, 7071. Uh, .com, And, of course, uh, that, that's all just like Ohio-based apparel. Um, it's not like podcast merchandise. It's just like 
it's just it's just Ohio based stuff, right? Um, doesn't it's a way for you to support us without buying merch that looks like it comes from a podcast, which I get. But if you don't mind merch that looks like a podcast, if you don't like stuff that is uh, almost Ohio State merch but legally isn't. Although I bump up against that line a little too closely sometimes, according to Ohio State's lawyers. Um, you can check out merch.thesloopcast.com. That is merch.thesloopcast.com. Get it before Ohio State takes it down. That's the motto of merch.thesloopcast.com. Get it before Ohio State's lawyers do. Uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, how about the Buckeye basketball team beating UCLA? This look, look, look sketchy there for a second. They did only, only making one of, was it one of 15 <laughs> behind the three point uh, mark? But I mean, UCLA only made one three pointer as well, too. <laughs> was it one of 15? It wasn't one of 15. It was like one of 10, something like that. Yeah. So, so it wasn't all that good though, but. Um, is this are we, are we going to be live by the three die by the three this year, Kyle? Is that um, is that the team? Is that the team this year? I wouldn't say so. Not not as much as um, other years. This year, minus what we saw this last game against UCLA, I say it's been pretty good at the three pointers. Um, surprisingly, so far this year, but kind of holding my breath just because of the history. Of the last few years, January, the January so, collapse, the January comes here and still kind of holding my breath. But I, I, I like what the I'm coach Holtman special. State. I'm liking what I'm seeing from this Ohio State team here. And yeah, we will. We will. We will see here. And fun fact it now. Chris Holtman is three and zero At Ohio State against UCLA. Well, that will be put to the test next season, assuming Holtman's still the coach at Ohio State next season, depending upon how things go on the January half of the season. Yes. Let's see if we can get out of the first day of the tournament this year. Let's see if we can get to the tournament. Let's see if we can get out of the first day of the tournament this year. Yep. All right. That's it. That is it, Jerry. Tonight's ending music is by an artist out of Cincinnati going by the name Lincoln. Uh, I believe it, the band is named Lincoln, but I think it's really just a guy whose name isn't Lincoln. But regardless, the, the, the name of the act at the very least is Lincoln. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Lincoln. <laughs>